Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now this is a new week and I know God has great plans for you. See, I always tell you this, the evidence of God's plan for your life is when he gives you his word. See, now his word communicates his thoughts to you. So every week on this broadcast, I, I take time to wait on the Lord for what he's going to give me to share with you. And so the kind of testimonies we receive, you know, about how direct this word is to several people who have messaged us, tells me that we are hitting exactly where God wants us to hit. Praise God. So I'm telling you this morning, listen prayerfully and God surely will bring his word to your heart. I always like to say this. We bring the atmosphere for the Spirit of God to do His work. Jesus said, the Father in me, He is the doer of the work. So, see, He gives us His word, we speak. And as long as we speak His truth, He is the one doing the work in your life. Praise God. So, I know this week is going to be a fabulous week. Uh, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make do, can we make demand like we normally do for our daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith right now with me and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now you see. I have, I've had um, some people share this with me. He said, do you know that since I started actually declaring or making demand for my daily bread, I noticed that um, I've begun to receive supplies. You know, those things are beginning to change in my finances. Things are beginning to change in provisions. Things that have been difficult before. All of a sudden, I noticed there's just been an, uh, a supply. Praise God. But that's what you're asking for. And because you're doing it consciously, even the angels now know that you are expecting something. See, most times, despite what God has promised, because we don't have expectations, we don't place any demand on God. It is when we begin to place demand on God based on His Word, we begin to shift things. See? Some think, oh, because I said it three days, for three days, I've not seen any results. You're like, does this thing really work? This thing is a consistent thing. So you just make up, you're not making up your mind and say, by the time I do this for one month, I should see results. No, you accept this thing as a new way of living. See, it become, becomes part of your daily routine. Ask, demand for your daily bread. Praise God. That's how it works. See, so I lead you to do, on, do it on this broadcast, but it doesn't mean that you must wait for me. Make it a part of your life. Give us this day our daily bread. You see, maybe you should re-call kids praying the Lord's prayer into your scheme of things. See, but then this time around, pray it with understanding and faith. I'll never forget, I was um, talking with an educationist, you know, someone in government, and she said something to me. I've never thought about that. But he said, um, he was just telling me how, from, from his place, how crime, cultism, and all these things have increased among young people. And he said to me, he said, do you notice something? I said, what? He said, when we were much younger in our primary school days, there's a song we generally used to sing on assembly ground. And what's that song? At least most Christian schools across the nation used to sing that song. And what's that song? Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus Come in today, come in to stay, 
come into my heart, Lord Jesus. You remember that song? Some of you will. Some that are much younger. You may not even know the song. But we used to sing that song. I remember we used to sing that song during um, school assembly. And I went to a military school, you know, primary military school. We used to sing that song during assembly every day. And this man said to me, he said, do you know that when we sing that song, we're actually, it's a prayer we were praying, requesting that Jesus comes into our hearts. And you see, because we do it, some may not have happened immediately, but a request has been made with our mouths. And so as you're growing up, Jesus has the right to visit you because you have made requests with your mouth, inviting him to come into your heart. And he said, those songs have stopped. So what? The devil is taking over a lot of young people. You know, I thought about it. I said, sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's a line where we're talking about, we're, we're still talking about the covenants. You know, sometimes we think because we have grown in knowledge. You know, when you, when you look at social media these days, because social media brings a lot of things closer today, you know, because the internet is there. So you, you hear the kind of arguments we argue and then you wonder, is it that we don't know what to talk about? I'm talking about preachers now. Is it that you don't know what to talk about? The truth is finished and now you're picking on what people are doing and telling and saying, this is wrong and this is this is wrong. So, so we look at that song and someone comes and says, eh, I could, you know, start bringing on one new revelation. It's even possible. It's possible, you see, that those things stopped because of the Pentecostal movement. You'll be shocked. Oh, you, you, you cannot just mass lead um, me make people pray like that, you know, and then someone just sells an idea. I remember years ago, a, 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 a minister that I trust in and I believe in so much taught that we should not pray the Lord's Prayer again. See? And he, he shared some things from the scriptures. But you see, this is the reason it's important that you have the Holy Spirit for yourself. Now, of course, now the same way I heard that message, a lot of people heard that kind of message or similar things like that. Then, when you walk with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit begins to open your eyes to see the wisdom. God is full of wisdom. And even, even songs that people sing, you see, you, you, you have no right to wake up and say, that song is not accurate. That song is not correct. Now, now especially when there are songs who there are songs that are clearly you, you when you listen to the song, you know this song is not from the is not from the Lord. You see, and and uh, it doesn't promote the gospel in any way. But then, when someone sings a song, he may not be according to you accurate in understanding that you think you have. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the song is wrong. The song can, could have come from the Lord. It doesn't have to suit your theology. See? You can choose not to sing the song, but it's wrong for you to come out and say, everybody should not sing that song. Why? And you can prove nothing. And you're trying to explain. That's your explanation that you're trying to give. If we wait some more, give us some more time, we'll even come to that point where we'll realize that your explanation is wrong. You know, like I said, you know, I, you know, a preacher thought that don't pray the Lord's Prayer again. If I even said it is wrong for a believer in Christ Jesus to pray the Lord's Prayer. Now, he was convinced about it. But then, personally, as I grew with the Lord, I had to come back to revisit this thing. How did I revisit? I didn't go to the Lord and say, Lord, should we pray the Lord's prayer or should we not pray the Lord? Now, based on what the Lord was teaching me, and because 
because the Lord began to take me on a journey in understanding the fatherhood of God. Now that's what the core of my, my teaching always revolves around. Bringing you to that place where you understand the fatherhood of God in your life. And so as I began my journey with the Lord, then he began to show me a lot of things. Now that brought us to the purpose of the Lord's prayer. And then now when we got to the purpose of the Lord's prayer, I looked again and said, hey, so why did this preacher say we shouldn't listen again? Now you go listen again to what he taught and, and um, the scriptures he shared. And then you realize, ah, no, 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 no. I don't think this was right. This wasn't right. See? Now it's even possible he has changed his mind concerning it. See? But then how many people will even be inspired in their hearts to ask, because now the Lord began to give instructions. So he gave instructions like, look, on your broadcast, begin to lead the people listening to you to make requests for their daily bread according to what Jesus taught. See, now there are people who will hear that kind of instructions, but because they have been taught wrong, will say, ah, Lord, no, I can't do that too. Because we're not supposed to even pray this prayer. So if I take a line from that prayer, it will be as though we're praying that prayer. You see? Now that's what Jesus said. He said, you err because you don't know the, um, you don't know the, the power of God. And you don't know the scriptures. There are lots of errors like that. So later you even come and ask yourself, so what was the purpose of that teaching in the first place? Was praying the Lord's Prayer doing damage to anybody? No. Just like some songs we sing. The singing that song, does it do any damage to anybody? No. The Lord Jesus is exalted. But then you now come. Now there are, there are, there are things that, there are, there are things that we sing that is wrong. Okay. So giving glory for what is not is wrong. So, of course, you know, for example, this song we sing, you see me, I'm going in that direction. But, but I need to explain this to you so you understand um, where I'm coming from. You know the song we sing? Um, for you are glorious and worthy to be praised, the Lamb upon the throne. You know that song? Now, that song, how beautiful, no matter how beautiful it is. You see that phrase? Notice, it says, For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. So, the song itself is a song of worship. Okay? So, you are worshipping someone. And then, who's the person you're worshipping? You now say, The Lamb upon the throne. Now, one day I was singing that song and I heard the Lord say to me that there is no lamb on the throne. I paused like, there is no lamb on the throne. I said, there is no lamb on the throne. What are you singing? Okay. So I had to go <laughs> do some study and research. And truly I, I, I realized, hey, now you see, worship, yes, but then the, whoever received that some beautiful song, but then you see, there is the imagination of the mind that was wrong. The Bible never spoke of a lamb on the throne because there is no lamb on the throne. See? So what do I do? I change it to the king upon that throne. Now that's the only line that has a problem in that song. Beautiful song. But that line, the lamb upon the throne. Now because this is an act of worship, you are adoring. The person you are adoring must receive what you're giving. If not, the whole song is a waste. Okay? So now I'm worshiping one and I say, the lamb upon the throne. Because there is no lamb on the throne, my worship goes nowhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, this is important. See, so, but then, 
some other songs we sing, you know, I, 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 I'm trying to remember one now. Um, several songs we sing, you know, that people have come out to, to condemn. I, I can't even remember anyone. But you know what I'm doing? Then you, you look at the, their condemnation. If somebody is singing and praising God and says, Jehovah overdue. You understand that? Someone is praising, he sings a song. I say, he is the Jehovah overdue. Now, you cannot criticize him for that. Because now he is praising God. So, he, he, he prefers to call God the one who does over. You can't come and say that the scriptures never call God. But then, he says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. He did. A preacher came out the other day and said, um, people should not sing channels of my spirit open up. Now you, you can simply see. You know, sometimes you wonder if these things are done out of strife. I don't know. Because sometimes a pastor can hear his members singing and rejoicing at the song. And then he just feels paranoid. Why they sing? And say, then he, he finds something wrong with the song. And he says, don't sing that song again. Okay, why? What's the explanation? There is no explanation that can qualify your statement to say, don't sing that song. None. None. The reason is because you need to first of all find out the statement in itself is not wrong. Channels of my spirit. It's not wrong. Because you don't know the exact channel the singer is talking about. Like I said, you as a person can choose not to sing the song. That's your business. But for you to come, I don't remember what Jesus said. I shared that with you last week. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teach men so, you will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So you can choose not to sing a song. But you don't tell people except you are clearly able to show them that this song does not um, glorify the name of the Lord. So when someone sings channels of my spirit, open up. Now, you know, yes. You see, we, we, we always confuse these things, spirit and soul. We always confuse them. But then you understand what the person is talking about. See, Jesus said, out of my belly shall flow rivers. Of living water. Now, when something is flowing, Jesus said, out of your own belly, you that believe in Jesus, out of your belly, your belly shall flow. Now, Jesus made that statement. And if something is going to flow, naturally, that thing must have channels. Either one or multiple channels. See, Jesus made a statement. Out of your belly, shall flow rivers every river have channels so one can receive a revelation from that statement of jesus and because the bible says jesus referred to the holy spirit so when someone says channels of my spirit open up he's he's saying the channels that this flow expresses itself from let it open. So how then do you criticize that? You know, several things, you know, oh, well, way maker. God is not a way maker. I mean, these things sometimes, sincerely speaking, may be born out of strife. That's my own conclusion. Because the explanations are, in truth, they are baseless. When you say Jesus is, is, is not the way maker, that's reality. Because we still preach Jesus as the one who makes the way. We will still preach it till tomorrow. So I as a person can relate with the Lord to the point where I think of it and I see the way. But then it's wrong for me to now come and say, I will not say Jesus is a way maker. Because, because even to me, when I lack wisdom, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him act. So I'm in a state. I don't know what to do. And I go before the Lord. I say, Lord, 
I don't know what to do concerning this situation. We still do that till today. No matter how spiritual you are, you do it. Lord, what, what do I do in this situation? I seem to be stuck. And then the Lord gives you wisdom. What's that? He's made a way. He's made a way. He opens your eye to see what you didn't see before. He's made a way. So the person who received that song, received it by the inspiration of the Spirit of God. See? So, like I said, like the one I described, the lamb upon the throne. Now that's clear. There is no lamb on the throne. There is no lamb on the throne anyway. In the book of Revelation, it says, I saw in the midst of the throne. In the midst of the throne doesn't mean you see. Because when you say the lamb upon the throne, you imagine a chair as a throne chair. You know, like we see earthly kings. And then you see a lamb sitting on that chair. You don't think about it. Praise <laughs> God. The, the description John gave, he says, in the midst of the throne. Now, that's because the throne of God is not a chair. The throne is not a chair. And people receive revelations. Oh, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne. And not because God actually sits on a throne. Nah. But it can pass when you say, I'm worshipping the king who's on the throne. It can pass. Because we know what you're talking about. We are, we are worshipping a person. And the person is real. Whether I sitting on a chair or not, there is the throne of God. But it's not a chair. <laughs> it's God. Don't ever think you go to heaven and see God sitting on a chair. Ah. So let's be careful with these things and, and not start doing damage to God's children in such a manner that we create a wicked generation that will depart from the Lord. That's all I'm sharing with you today. Remember, we're talking about God's covenants. Praise God. My time is up. But I pray you picked one or two lessons from what I just shared with you. Don't get involved in some of these baseless arguments. They are unnecessary. You've got the Spirit of God in you. Let Him guide you. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.